Next, ladies and gentlemen, it gives me great pleasure to invite on stage. Please welcome Mr. Chan Chiao Ho, Government Chief Information Officer, GovTech, to speak on re-engineering the government infrastructure, the Singapore Technology Stack. Welcome aboard, sir. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, I think Ping Sun has kind of like shown you the vision of what we are trying to create. But you know, that's the tip of the iceberg, right? The how-to part is even more difficult because the same old way of doing things in the past is not going to make this happen. So, so what do we have to do going forward? I think one of the biggest challenges that government has had for the longest time is not moving. The slides are not moving. No. Ah, okay. So, you know, we, we, we had this thing about the need for a horizontal shift. So what does it mean? Because for the longest time, government has always built applications in a monolithic vertical fashion, like this. Right? Tons of verticals, very fragmented, and you'd be surprised there are actually more than a thousand websites and apps all over the place. And I think one of the biggest problems with this is that none of these things can be shared. It's a, horizontal, it's a vertical concept that doesn't allow us to keep progressing in the way that we want to be. So the transformation from vertical to horizontal is a significant shift both for ourselves as well as the industry. It's not just a technological change, it's a mindset change. And this process, well, we didn't start yesterday. Um, I think about three industry briefing ago, I was talking about this in the same stage. And um, I think the good news is that uh, we actually have moved quite a fair bit. And I'll talk a little bit about what we've done. One of the biggest challenge that we have today is that we need to move up the fulfillment hierarchy. This is just like what any service firm has, has, has come through over the years. We started by just, for, just giving people information. You know, uh, as Ping Su was mentioning about the days of NCB, etc. It was about information. Information online was great. As you move on to the transaction level, it's about individual transactions. And in some ways, we are still stuck here at the transaction level, which is people come to government service by service, agency by agency to do a transaction. Then we talk about moments, right? We're moving up to the moments now, whereby because of something that's going to happen in your life, whether it's giving birth to a child, whether a child is going to school or finding a job, the moments triggers a whole series of transactions. Do you want to go to 10 agencies for that? Answer is no. But the bigger challenge as we move forward is that how do we look at citizen as one person, an individual? And individual has multiple moments. For example, you might start with the fact that you have three kids. One is going to school, one is going to work, you are looking for a job, your parents are getting old, that's a citizen. A citizen contains many moments. So very much like financial institutions, right? Uh, we, we, we go through the same process. Um, and our job is to try to elevate government service, fulfillment hierarchy, up to the concept of a citizen. And for those things to happen, the platform is, is required. Single monolithic applications will not work in this way. So what do we do? Um, I think one of the other big challenge that we have is that all agencies used to do everything themselves. So an agency will say, yeah, I own my data center, I own my applications, I work with a single vendor. It's about doing everything yourself. But in this day and age, that's going to limit you significantly. It's about how do you leverage the ecosystem? And leveraging the ecosystem has Four parts, which I'll talk a little bit about. One, the industry. Now, of course, all agencies use industry. But the question is that how do you use the industry to transform significantly? In the past, it was all about SI. I go to a SI, I give you a, 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 a tender document, and then I close my eyes. Hopefully, two years later, I get something. That, that's how the industry is being used. But today, it's not the case anymore. There are many models. Like at Hive, we do a lot of co-sourcing. We co-source with the industry. We work together with industry. Um, we work with, as, as uh, Ping Sun mentioned just now, Inoli, getting the industry to come forward and journey together with us in developing use cases. So the industry collaboration model is going to change significantly going forward. 
The second thing we realize very quickly is that government is only one part of the entire value chain for many things we do. Government isn't everything. So give you an example, national trade platform. We design national trade platform as the ability to, in a sense, harmonize the entire value chain. From the moment a shipment comes to Singapore, custom is cleared, it gets trade finance certificate, insurance, freight forwarding, logistics. It's an, entire, it's an entire value chain. And that value chain can only be glued together if you have a seamless platform that does that. So the value chain partners are important. The third thing, which is also very interesting, is that we used to think that government needs to do everything itself. That's not true. Um, the crowds, the people around you, the citizens, are very willing to participate to solve real problems that citizens face every day. A year and a half or two years ago, exactly on this platform again, we spoke about my responder. That was about crowd. We today have 30,000 people out there who are lifesavers, right? And this concept will, will, will continue. It's about how do you leverage people who are willing to work together with the government to solve real problems for our people. And then finally, it's platforms. And I use the word there, smart approach to assets and capabilities. We are now reach a point whereby we don't have to own everything. We don't have to have a server we can touch and feel good about. That's not the point. The point is, how do you leverage cloud? How do you leverage uh, platforms which you may not see physically, but it's there? And I think this mindset change is going to be dramatic, and it's going to inf impact the way industry is going to function with us going forward. So the evolution of government is a platform. This thing did not come just like that, right? I think about three years ago, or two years ago, I, I, I stood on this platform here, platform here, and we mentioned some of these things. We said that we wanted to move towards a government platform, we want to go more towards cloud, etc., etc. And we took some bets. Um, three years ago, platform as a service, etc., was very nascent. We took a lot of bets. Uh, everybody came to us. We had to choose, and we did that. So. In, in some ways, the government tech stack is there now, and we'll talk a little bit about that later. Two is that we are moving on bare metal more and more towards the cloud, and not just government cloud, but commercial cloud. Uh, you will see a lot more announcements of that coming forward, whereby <clears throat> we will push more and more applications into the commercial cloud so as to be a lot more effective in the way we deploy services. I call it darkness to bright to, to light. Last year, I spoke about Smart Nation Sensor Platform. Well, the good news is that it's thriving very well. We are now able to see the light in a sense. You know, uh, we're not flying blind anymore. We are able to connect more and more sensors together. And again, I'll talk a little bit about that later. And another concept which is extremely important for us is the concept of access to identity. For the longest time, SingPass and CogPass, which is about 15 years ago, was about access, access to government services. But there's more than that now. It's gone way beyond access to identity. And I'll talk about identity, about that later on. And then finally, the last part we talk about is government and citizens. Yep. The focus is no more on the government. The government is one government. It's not 90 agencies or 98 agencies. It's what the citizen needs to contact with is one government. And how do we do that? So the tech stack, as I mentioned, um, it's quite a complete stack that you'll see. Many of the people who are in the industry will realize that. It's not just about the government stack, it's also the commercial stack. We are encouraging more and more developers to use the cloud, even for uh, uh, systems that are restricted, not, not just unclassified. So you will find that more and more systems can be developed in the cloud and will leverage all the services and capacity of the cloud. Um, we also have a common API gateway whereby um, APIs are shared significantly among government agencies, and in time, we'll expose it also to the industry. Now, this is a very important thing because when we first started building the API gateway, people were cynical and say, ah, you know, how many APIs does government have, and et cetera. Today, we are running APIs calls close to a million a day. So this is the kind of scale that we're talking about. So, you know, as, as I mentioned, this is a kind of a hybrid structure whereby we combine both what we built in the government intranet as well as the internet, whereby commercial clouds are going to be used significantly. Now, we talk about smart nation platform. As I said, 
you know, the, 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 the platform is really on the way. We have already started connecting many things. But the best thing about the platform is not just the platform alone. It's the use cases that is sprouting out like wildflowers in a sense. People are now able in the agencies to try things. You know, the platform is there. People can try new things. You know, when, when people started installing cameras at the swimming pool for drowning detection, we thought it was a great idea. So more and more, you'll go to swimming pools now, you'll find that there'll be cameras there, and it's 24 by 7 surveillance, and it helps us really solve real problems that could save lives. So all these use cases, this is only the tip of the icebergs, and there are more coming up every day, right? I mentioned the concept of identity. Um, identity management is probably one of the most complex things that is confronted by everyone in the tech industry whether it's a Facebook or a Google or any of these big tech companies, it's all about how do you address the entire identity of a person. It's not just about access. It's not just about user ID and password. Uh, Pingsun mentioned a bit about MyInfo. MyInfo is an example. It's part of the identity management suite of services. So, you know, the uh, good thing about the team is that they push this out as a, as a, as a service that now banks and many other, other companies are using. More and more of these things will happen. The ability to share data safely with the consent of citizens, the ability to delegate safely. These are all some of the functions which the national digital identity is going to do. And it's going to go beyond government very much into the entire industry. And then finally, moments of life. Um, Bingston talked about the, the, the use case and the, and the way things are being used. But if you look closely at moments of life, there are two parts. That's what we call above the hood and below the hood, right? Above the hood, the whole question is about citizen centricity. It's a focus on citizens. It's about you need something, you come to the government, the services should be there for you, and you don't have to navigate through an entire you know, maze of uh, uh, agencies to get to where you want. Second thing is anticipatory. More and more so, our job is to be able to anticipate what you need and give it to you before you even ask for it. And anticipation is not intrusive because this is moments. We know that when, you get, when there's a childbirth, there are seven things or eight things you need to do. It's anticipation. And then finally, it's about a one government approach. You don't want to deal with agency, uh, fragmented agencies. You really want to deal with the Singapore government. And we, 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 we heard that. But under the hood, it's even more difficult. Because to make this happen, we have to move more and more towards a microservice architecture. And um, moments of life is the first uh, instantiation of microservice architecture in a big way for the government. But this will continue, this platform will continue throughout the entire lifespan of a citizen as well as for the business, as Bingston mentioned about G2B. So again, microservice driven. Another concept, very important, is really about design driven development. It's not about writing a set of specs, but it's really about focusing on the user journey and to make sure that it's as easy to use as you possibly can. And finally, it uses a platform. So whatever services and APIs that's created here, will it be infinitely shareable to any other applications that we are doing. And our objective is very simple. We really want to elevate application development to a point whereby it's really about a bundling of services and APIs, and uh, instead of writing codes from scratch, if you can. So what's next? Um, as I mentioned, the tech stack, we ate our own dog food big time in the first stage. We piloted it. We used it at Hive alone, and nobody had, had light of day of that. We now are confident it can be done. We move it to the agencies. And now we are building our strategic national platforms on the tech stack. The next thing would be to engage industry more. And I'll talk a little bit about that later on, uh, in terms of how do we work together to develop this stack so as to be able to allow more people to work on it. And uh, I think our guiding principle is very simple. It's about interoperability. How do we interoperate? There can be more than one stack. There's commercial cloud. They are all going to be into it. The, the key is interoperability. How do we consolidate and scale? Um, little data room somewhere and uh, doing minute stuff is not going to be the watchword of the day. It's about how do you scale? How, do you, how are you able to burst capacities, uh, go into elastic computing, et cetera? Rationalize. Um, as part of the moments of life, et cetera, we are also trying to rationalize a lot of the, a lot of the services that we have. Um, I always give the, the, the weird analogy. Many applications and websites are like CDs you have. There's one hit song and nine songs you never play, 
right? And the problem is that the reason why people need to do that is because they need to justify the app or, or the website. So what we are more concerned about is to create the greatest hits album, whereby we only, only focus on that. And then finally, we will start mandating more and more stuff which I think are usable across the whole government. Like for example, SingPass is the only authentication platform for the entire government. So this is kind of the, the, the um, principles that we are, we, are, we, are, we are driving to. So what are the implications? Um, these are challenges which are pretty big. Um, I think we need to work together with the industry significantly to build capabilities. Because this is only the beginning. Everybody comes to us and says, wow, we don't have the right people to do the job. So training is important, sharing is important. You know, getting people to work together and collaborate is gonna be very important going forward. The next point is probably one of the most important points for me, which is big and small players will need to have a more level playing field. When you build a monolithic platform that costs $30 million, it shuts out nearly all the small players. But if you can develop on the cloud or the tech stack, all of a sudden you find that smaller players can come in and do just as good a job and push something out quickly. More sharing of data and services will allow us to not reinvent the wheel, we're going to leverage, we're going to keep using the same microservices and APIs instead of building a thousand of them. The tighter integration between government, industry, and citizen is inevitable. It's an ecosystem we're building. And uh, finally, I think things have mentioned to you quite a fair bit. We are allocating a lot of the budget more from just running to transformation. And uh, that's very evident in the, 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 the plans that we have for it. But the, at the end of the day, it's about leading to a better outcome for citizens and businesses. So with that, let me just finish with one last slide. In October this year, uh, I think October 2nd and 3rd, we're gonna, we're gonna have the first inaugural GovTech DevCon. Uh, DevCon. DevCon is what? It's about getting together the industry, technology people together. It's a conference of technologists. Come together, we experiment, we try new things together. Uh, we have tracks talking about the tech stack. Um, hands-on learning. We will have a whole bunch of keynote speakers from global keynote speakers that will talk about platform approach, new tech, etc. We will have sandboxes and code labs so that you have hands-on practice. And most of all, it's really to have fun and geek out in a sense. So look forward to that, 2nd, 3rd October. And uh, we expect probably about the same crowd, I mean about 800,000 people, but not not all of you, but more, more of your geeky guys, okay? So, so with that, thank you very much. Big round of applause. Mr.